All right, so today we're going to talk about a topic that's uh, kind of near and dear to most people's hearts, probably, in a sense. Uh, here's the question. You're at home. You're sleeping. Middle of the night. You hear a crash. And three or, three or four armed people have broken into your house, kicked your door in, in a home invasion style attack. What are you going to do? Now, option one, of course, we got to have the option for the liberals who hate guns and hate self-defense and believe the Second Amendment's just meant muskets. Um, they will call the police, if they can, and beg the four or five armed men not to beat, rape, rape, rob, kill them. Um, more power to you if that's your plan for self-defense for your family, but that's not me. Uh, I'm going to defend my family. Now, there's three main options for home defense, really, uh, as far as firearms go. Uh, of course, you know, there's going to there, be people who will say, well, you should just have a baseball bat sitting by the bed and chase them with that. Okay, well, if they're armed with uh, firearms, which criminals tend to use and get from illegal sources, not from gun shows and not from things like that, they tend to steal them in home invasions of people who aren't armed. Hmm. There's a thought. Anyway, so four or five armed people kick in your door. What are you going to do? You're going to go for your, your firearm if you have one. And if you don't, you probably ought to get one. Uh, the Second Amendment is for everybody. What are those three options? There's three main options, like I said. All right, number one, this. It's clear. Uh, handgun. There are, uh, there are a lot of people who have a handgun. Uh, so that is, that is one of your options. Your second option, really, would be this. Your old shotgun. Uh, there's a lot of those floating around. And then your third option would be something like this, a rifle. Now, each of these options has their pluses and their minuses, their pros and their cons. I just want to go through them real quick. Uh, to give you a little information so you can make the choice you need to make as far as to what you're going to do. Okay, so we will start with the handgun. Now, one of the benefits of the handgun, one of its positives, one of its uh, pros it's got going for it, is if you're like me, you probably have that on you pretty much anytime you're awake. And they say, well, you said someone kicks the door in the middle of the night. Okay, if you're like me, you've got one sitting by the bed too, but point is, home invasions, if you look at the uh, statistics from the FBI and the government and the sources like that, they don't all happen at night when you're asleep. Criminals are getting uh, cocky. They'll kick the door in in the middle of the day when people are there. So, uh, there's a good chance that if someone were to come into your house, this might be sitting on your hip already. So it's got ease of access. So that is a good positive for it. Another positive for it is, you know, You know, it's fairly easy to shoot, you know. Uh, especially if you've got something like a 9mm, it's not going to have a whole lot of recoil or something you're going to be able to get on target. So, um, that's the positive. Now, for some, some negatives to a handgun, uh, one, for a lot of handguns, especially concealed carry type handguns, would be ammunition capacity. Um, this is a Beretta 92. This is what I generally carry. It, uh... Standard magazine for it is 15 rounds. I actually have a 17 round magazine in it normally. Uh, so I've got 18 rounds on me most of the time. Just in here, which is not bad. Uh, that's pretty good capacity. A lot of your smaller concealed carry type guns will have six rounds, maybe seven, maybe eight. It's not a lot of shots. Um, now, if it's just one person coming, who kicks in the door and you have, you've got to defend yourself against, well, one, one person you can handle with six or seven rounds. If it's a, a gang, you know, four, three or four or five guys coming into the door, um, you better be a really good shot. So that is a negative to a handgun. Another negative is just power. Handguns are less high powered than, say, shotguns or rifles. They're compact. You know, they're easy to... Conceal. Uh, they have 
things going for them, but they're not as as powerful. They're just not. That's a proven fact. So uh, that's the handgun. And the second option we talked about was this right here, your 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, some pros for it. Uh, they're cheap. Uh, you can get a good pump action 12 gauge shotgun for two to three hundred dollars. Uh, am ammunition form is also fairly cheap. You can get a box of self-defense shells. Uh, these right here, P Winchester PDX self-defense. Uh, I think they were ten bucks for a box, like twenty of them, if I remember. You know, it's not too bad, and it's not something you're gonna have to use a whole lot of. So it's not like you have to shoot three, four hundred rounds out of it to get it. You know, buy you a box of that, load her up, she's good to go. Uh, another positive to it is. It's got some power to it. Um, if you get hit with a 12 gauge, you're going to feel it. Um, now, one myth that you hear people say is, well, with a shotgun, you just got to point it in the right direction and shoot. You don't have to aim. Not so much true. Uh, you still do need to aim, depending on what, I mean, use your sights, whatever they are. This one has a little peep sight on the back and a front blade sight. Uh, yours might just have a bead on the front or a fiber optic or whatever. Uh, you might have a red dot mounted on it, whatever you've got, but use that sight. Uh, shotgun shell spread at a, about a rate of, I think it's an inch for every seven, it's either seven feet or seven yards. I don't remember which, but we're talking about home defense, so the ranges are not going to be very far. So it's not going to be, uh, if you loaded this up with birdshot, it's not going to be this giant spread that just takes out the entire room. It's going to be a you know softball-sized hole. Um, so that's some plus, some pluses. Some uh, negatives to a shotgun is that it is it does kick. Um, if you've got if you're so, if you're a smaller person, if you've got if it's a if you're a female, if uh, you're a male and it's something your wife might use, uh, they they kick. They don't. They, they, they've got some recoil to them. Uh, you can counteract that some by using less lessened recoil rounds so they, they do make those that sort of thing uh, and then another thing is ammunition capacity uh, this has an extended magazine on it here and it holds seven the standard for it is five um, so five shots because with the shotgun you don't generally want to care have it stored loaded because I'm with one in the uh, chamber anyway, because the, most shotguns, if they if they have one in the chamber and they were to fall over or drop, they have a chance of going off. So, uh, ammunition capacity is a concern, but at the same time, we're talking about a, a, a in a house situation, so it's small small space. Uh, if there were three or four guys coming into a door and you're, you've got a 12 gauge standing there with some buckshot in it and you unload four or five shots into that door well the chances are <clears throat> those bad guys aren't going to be bothering you anymore um, even bird shot so that's the shotgun and we'll move on to our last option here which is the venerable or infamous or whatever you term it rifle. Uh, this is an, a an AR-15. If you've got an AK-47, if you've got something else, that's fine too. Um, it doesn't really matter what it is. point is, semi-automatic rifle. Um, or bolt action. Excuse me. I suppose you could use a bolt action. But semi-automatic rifle for home defense is another good option. Now, uh, some pros to it. It'll hold a lot of rounds. Uh, the standard capacity magazine for this thing holds 30 rounds. 30. Uh, that is over three of this thing, over four, over four of the shotgun, and uh, double what this will hold with a standard magazine. So, it's got good capacity. Uh, with an AR-15, these actually are extremely light shooting. Um, you know, they do shoot a, they shoot a fairly small bullet. You know, it's a 223, so it's a little bit over a 22 size, 22 caliber as far as the how far big around it is. Uh, 
but they have a lot of power. They shoot that bullet really fast, and they have they have good stopping power. Uh, AK-47s have good stopping power too. Other rifles you might be thinking of that you have, they've got good stopping power too. Uh, but the AR-15s is just what I'm talking about because that's what I've got right here. Uh, it does have good stopping power, and it also has good protection from over, over penetration a lot of times because these small bullets tend to break up uh, when they hit a soft target. So if you uh, if you if you hit a bad guy, it's probably not going to go through them and hit somebody else. It'll probably break up in them, which is good because you don't want to overpenetrate. Right. Now some negatives to it. Uh, well, again, it's kind of big. You know, it's not something you can carry around. It's not something you can have. I mean, I suppose you could strap it in your back when you're walking around the house, but so it's not. It doesn't have the convenience of the handgun. Um, it doesn't have the spread of a shotgun. It's going to aim right where you aim it. So, all three have their negatives, they have their positives. Um, so if I have to pick, what is my go-to? What is my first option when it comes to an intruder, an armed intruder? Well, my first option, I would say to you, is if someone breaks into your house, kicks in the door... And they just want stuff. If all they're asking for is, hey, give me your TV, give me your money, give me your wallet, give me your Xbox, give me your whatever. Just give it to them. Um, your stuff's not worth dying for. Uh, if they come in, kick in your door, and you've got a way out, your, the, if the design of your house allows for you and your family to get out of that house and completely avoid the situation, better option. Uh, but your, the design of your house maybe set up where if someone kicks in your front door you don't have a way out other than through the bad guy and now and in that case you gotta do what you gotta do to protect your family so uh, which one would I pick hmm. I'd pick whichever one is most handy to me um, so for me the most likely option if someone were to kick in that door right over there right now would be this right here. So it's going to be on my hip, ready to go. Now, let's say it's four or five guys kicking in the door. Well, this will get me to where I can get this, or I can get this. Um, it doesn't have to be one or another. You know, it's reasonably doable. To have all three options. Uh, if you if you if you can't afford to get all three, let's say you've only got enough money to get one. Um, if you're if you're someone who's going to be a concealed carrier, if you're going to get your concealed carry permit and going to carry a weapon on you, I say this: get your get your handgun. If you're someone who's not, I would say the shotgun. That's me.